All right, so we're gonna be disassembling this 13 inch MacBook Pro model A1502 late 2013. Um, oh, actually I don't need all these other ones. For some reason I thought it was a newer model, um, but we're gonna be using a Pentalobe 1.2 or P5 screwdriver. All right, we're also going to be using a T5 or Torx 5 screwdriver. And um, we might need also the T8 or Torx 8 if we're gonna be removing the screen. All right, so first thing we're gonna do is use the Pentalobe 1.2 or P5 screwdriver and remove all the screws from the bottom. You wanna keep them in order because they can be different size, shape, and lengths. The way I do that is I put them flat side down, <clears throat> excuse me, like this in the pattern I remove them. So you see we have this rectangular shape. We're gonna go ahead and do that and leave them in that pattern on my desk, all right? <clears throat> so let's get all of these out. First thing you want to do, this had liquid damage, so the main thing you want to do is open it up and disconnect the battery as soon as possible. All right, you want to also make sure to turn it off. The customer um, did the smart thing; they flipped it upside down so the water could drain out, and um, they hung the screen off the edge of their table with a towel underneath the keyboard to kind of absorb any liquid that might come out. All right, so that's the smart way to go about it. <clears throat> All right, if this video helps you out, make sure to like, subscribe, share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their devices as well. If it helps you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. All right, so as you can see, once you get all those screws out, you can go from the back here and just kind of pop the cover up. So far inside, it looks pretty dry. Main thing we're gonna do, again, is disconnect the battery. So I wanna do this quick. So I'm gonna zoom in here so you can see the connector. We're gonna just pop it out. You can see it goes here. We're gonna pull from both corners and pop the battery out like this. Oops, just like that. All right, so there we go. Now the battery is disconnected from the computer. So far, it looks pretty dry inside, so they're probably gonna be lucky. It'll probably be just fine. We're gonna clean all this dirt and dust and stuff out. And then <clears throat> what we're gonna do is take the entire logic board or motherboard, whatever you wanna call it, out. Usually they call it logic board now because all these connectors, peripherals are all attached, all right? And then after we've done that, <clears throat> we're gonna take our electric air blower and blow through the keyboard to make sure everything is dried out. Um, again, so far I don't see any liquid on the inside from this side, so we should be good to go. Anyways, I'm gonna clean the dust out of here and I'll be back, I'll see you guys in a bit. All right, so I'm back, clean this out, okay. Oh, I might have to actually delete the trash from this phone, I don't have much recording time left. Anyways, I just brushed the dust uh, with a toothbrush and then just use my electric air blower to kind of get all the remaining dust out. Okay, so actually let me delete the trash real quick because I don't want it to stop midway from running out of storage. All right, so I'm back. Let's go ahead and continue disassembling this computer. All right, um, most of the stuff comes out with the T5 or Torx 5. All right, anyways, let's go ahead and zoom in and start uh, removing components. All right, first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna disconnect the screen. Um, of course, we already disconnected the battery. Um, if you're gonna be disconnecting the screen, you wanna open it up, press and hold the power button for 15 seconds to drain any residual power. This is important because if you don't, there's a very good risk that you're going to fry the screen. So we're just gonna hold it for a few more seconds, all right? Okay, I think that was about 15 seconds. Let's go ahead and close this and let's go ahead and disconnect the screen here. So we're gonna flip this little metal latch up. Hopefully you can see, you can actually get underneath that plastic piece and then flip that up. But usually I find it's a bit easier for me to go underneath one of these corners here with my nail, all right? And then just pop it up just like that. Once you get that, you can grab the two edges or the sides of this connector thing, and you wanna go towards the bottom and pull that back just like this, okay? We're gonna basically, let's go ahead and pull the screen out as well. Um, so to get this out, <clears throat> first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna remove these rubber pieces. There's one on each side. All right, so you wanna check here, I forgot which side. Okay, so it's there's a adhesive going along this way. So what I'm going to do, um, this one's a little tricky because of the metal piece, but we're gonna get underneath here and try and peel the adhesive up away from it, just like this. And hopefully, oh, that one got folded in on itself. Did it fold backwards? Wait, what? Okay, I'm gonna, I'll try and unfold this, but it looks like it's 
like stuck like that. All right. Anyways, we got that rubber piece out. We're going to remove that aside. Then we're going to do the same thing with this side. I believe they go along this way. So we're going to do, we're going to go in between. Um, that's usually the best way to remove it. And then while you're going in between, you kind of peel up in like that. And you're basically holding the adhesive in place. Okay, we got that. Let's zoom in again. Okay, and we're going to go ahead and remove this now. Okay, so once we remove this screw, we're going to go ahead and pull this little metal piece out. Okay, this helps hold the hinge in place. So even if the hinge screws come loose or something, the hinges will be held in place. We're going to do the same thing with this side. <clears throat> okay, just like that. And then we're going to have to remove all these screws. But let's go ahead and remove the wireless antennas first. You go to the tails. Just pull straight up on the tail and it should pop out. We're going to do that for all three, just like this. Okay. <clears throat> then we got the uh, camera connector here. If you want, you can also pull this out. So you kind of just pull that up like that. It has these little rubber things that kind of grab it like that. Okay. <laughs> we'll put this back later. <clears throat> okay. So we're going to also peel this up because there's an adhesive under here. So you want to be careful with this. All right. So go underneath and just slowly, carefully peel this up going, working your way along. Okay. Just like this. All right. There we go. Then we're going to work our way over the side. Same thing. This is the camera cable is, or sorry, the wireless antennas are held in place with two screws here. So of course we're going to leave that for now. Okay, then this part, it can be a little tricky. You kind of want to walk this connector out because we're going to be reusing the screen. We have to be extra, extra careful because you don't want to damage it. So, oh, it actually came out really easily. But usually I'll like push left, right, left, right until it slowly walks itself out. Um, anyways, there we go. Okay, let's go ahead and zoom back out. So now what we're going to do, we're going to hang the screen over the edge of the desk. So let's go ahead and open this thing up. We're going to open it all the way and have the screen hanging over, excuse me, the edge. All right, now we're going to switch over to the T8 or Torx 8 screwdriver, and we're gonna remove the six screws, three on each hinge. Let's go ahead and remove those. Okay, we are going to use red thread locker afterwards to hold these screws in place. These screws actually felt a little bit loose, um, so actually the thread locker will help make that better. If you're wondering, this SSD is removable and replaceable. There's just one screw. comes out very easily. I'm going to leave that in. Well, actually, I guess we'll take it out just to make sure no water got under there. But I don't think any water got under there. Okay. All right. So we're getting all six screws out. Okay. Once you got all six screws out, you can let the screen drop to like 90 degrees. And then you can lift it out. And there we go. There's the old screen. Um, I hope. There's no water in here. I mean, um, there shouldn't be. It can sometimes go into this, but they said it fell into the keyboard, so this should be okay. And also, the computer turned itself on one time when they first um, when they first brought it. So yeah. All right. Anyways, let's zoom in again and start removing other components. <clears throat> All right. We're going to remove the. SSD first, we're going to switch back over to the T5 or Torx 5. Again, you want to make sure all these screws stay in order because they are different size, shape, and lengths. And if you mix them up, you can cause problems to the computer. Actually, let me zoom in so I can show individual parts. We're going to lift it up slightly. Okay, as you can see, we can slightly lift this up. Then we're going to kind of just wiggle it and pull it back carefully. And there we go. That's the SSD. All right. And Apple uses special SSDs. There are adapters that let you use an M.2 uh, PCIe NVMe, NVMe SSD with this, but if you use that, keep in mind that your computer might not sleep properly. Sometimes it'll stay on, so you might have to treat it more like a Windows computer and shut it down when you're not using it. All right, anyways, <clears throat> let's pop this out. This is the keyboard backlight connector, so I just get underneath there and lift that up. Okay, and we'll move that out of the way. <clears throat> you got the charge port here, MagSafe port. Again, these are all T5 or Torx 5 screws that we're removing. Okay, so we're going to get those two screws out. And again, you want to keep them all in order. And then lift this up from the back slightly and slide this back. Okay, and then 
Now that we got that, we're gonna lift this. Usually there's an adhesive here, but for some reason it didn't stick very well. All right, and then you wanna pull this out. If you can somehow grab this plastic piece, that's good. If not, just get as close as you can to the connector as possible, holding the wires flat. And you kinda just wiggle it like this. I don't know if you can see it's forming a gap here. Once you form a gap, if you have fingernails, you can kind of use that to kind of pry in here. If you can't, then you can just keep kind of trying to pull the wire and there you go, you can see it came out. And here we go. So that's the MagSafe charger, charge port. All right, they have different models here. This is on this 820-3584-A, I think. All right, we'll set that aside. Okay, what's next? We got the, okay, let's actually take this one screw for the battery out just so it's a little bit easier to move around and work on. Okay. All right, so we got that. You can see now this moves up and down. All right, so it makes it a little bit easier when we're gonna take all of this out. Okay, we got the speaker connector here. So we're gonna get underneath and then um, usually I'll just pop this up with my fingernail like this, um, but let me show you with this tool here. So what you do is you wanna get the corner into the center of the um, connector. So we're kind of tilting it over at an angle. We're gonna get it under there and then we're gonna kind of twist to pop this up. All right, just like that. Once you do that, you can go over and then help pop that out. And the reason why we're using this is because you can get like an edge. You can see this connector has a gap in the middle. So it has that gap and then the outside edge is a little bit further. So when you use the middle, you can get into that gap and you can pop it out. Okay, so there we go. We got that out. Let's see, we're gonna work our way over from right to left. Usually I go left to right, but it's not really that important which screws you remove first. I'm gonna go ahead and remove this screw now. Okay, <clears throat> excuse me. There we go, all right. So now we're gonna go over here. We're gonna remove this one. Again, keep them in order. I like to put them in the pattern I removed them. That way it's easy to know where I got it from. Got this one up here remove that as well okay we're not going to mess with the heat sink but there are four screws underneath these rubber pieces if you really wanted to redo the thermal paste <clears throat> but I'm not going to do that if you do take this out keep in mind you do have to redo the thermal paste you can't just leave the old thermal paste on there okay we're going to now take this out flip this latch up and then we're going to go ahead and pull this connector back it's a little bit tricky because you want to keep the cable flat as you pull it back and there we go, okay. That's the keyboard connector here. And then we got the trackpad connector here. We're gonna do the same thing, flip that latch up, all right? Be careful when flipping it up. You don't wanna end up breaking that thing off. Then we're gonna grab this cable with the little, they have a little plastic tab here. We're gonna use that to help pull it out, and there you go. Okay, the tricky part is putting this all back together because these cables get in the way when you lay it back down, all right? Got these two screws here. Let's go ahead and remove those. Okay, just like this. Once you remove those two screws, you can remove this metal plate. Okay, we're gonna remove this screw up here. All right, then we got these two going down here, so we'll remove that. You technically don't have to remove this screw because we can lift the whole fan out with it, but might as well remove it completely just so we can see everything. Okay. <clears throat> um, I didn't show, but you can also pop this connector out right now. I like to use opposite corners with my fingernails like this, and then you kind of just wiggle and pop this out just like that. And be careful because we took all these screws out, the motherboard was also slightly coming up. Okay. Now that we got that, we're gonna go over here. Let's start removing these screws, okay? So we got these two down here holding this metal plate in place. Okay. Oh, I am missing one of the fan screws. Well, we'll do that after. Okay, we got that metal plate out. There's one fan screw down here. Don't forget that one. Okay. All right, then we got another two screws here, one here. And we can also leave the wireless card in there, but I'll take it out just to make sure there's no water or moisture underneath. Okay, we got that. 
Then we got one more screw up here holding the heat sink in place, I think. Oh, actually this is a PH0 or JS0 screw that we need to remove. So let's go ahead and remove that. All right. And then as promised, let's go ahead and take out this T5 or Torx 5 screw as well. Okay. Then we can go ahead and get underneath and pop this up. You wanna carefully slowly do this because there's a thermal pad that's making it stuck to the board. Okay, I'm actually doing this very slow and there you go, it peeled up. Once you get that peeled up, you can kind of grab that and just wiggle and pull this slightly, okay. All right, you can actually leave all these screws in um, when you take this out so that way it helps hold the board down. But here you can see the thermal pad. There's usually always gunk on this so I'm gonna use a toothbrush and just brush the side of it. You don't wanna get this part of the pad all dirty, all right? So let me do that real quick and I'll be back. All right, we're back, so clean that off a bit. All right, there's less gunk on it and we'll just set that aside. All right, next thing, let's see. Let's disconnect this part of the cable as well. Same thing, just get opposite corners. It doesn't have to be specific ones, but just the opposites. There we go. And we got this cable out. If for some reason you need a replacement, there is a model number there, 821-1790-A. Also keep in mind, both connectors are different, so you wanna actually match the opposite. So you see this one has the gold ring around it, that's where this one plugs. This one on the cable has the gold ring, so that's why it plugs over there, okay? Anyways, we'll set that aside. Now we have two more connectors under here. So another speaker connector, again, this time I'm just gonna use my fingernail. Basically, you just get under there, I'm gonna hold the board down, and then you kinda of just pop that up. All right, get under there and pop that out. And there you go, we got the speaker disconnected. Then we got this part of this board connector. We're gonna disconnect that as well. This has little squeeze clips that you kind of have to pinch it in. Okay, so you pinch this inwards and then you kind of just wiggle and pull it out and there we go. And you can actually remove this before removing all the rest of this motherboard. So again, like I said, I'm going right from left, but normally I would go left to right. It's not really that important, but yeah, all right, so let's go ahead and see if we can, as you can see, this fan is actually tucked underneath here. So we're gonna remove that. Let's flip this latch up. So if you need to replace the fan, keep that in mind. You are going to have to kind of either lift the motherboard up or you're gonna have to take the heat sink out, all right? So I flipped this little latch up. Now we're gonna get this connector out. Usually there's some adhesive. Oops, I should zoom in. So usually there's some adhesive holding it in place. So we're gonna get underneath there. And then we're gonna use this raised bump here to help push that out slightly. Sometimes, or usually you'll have to kind of wiggle it a little. All right, and come on, there we go. Okay, you can see the white little line on there moved back. That's how you know you got it out. Then we can go ahead and lift the board up. You wanna be careful not to bend this thing. Um, let me zoom out a bit more, okay. You can kind of lift the motherboard from anywhere. Um, you can lift it from here. Um, if you're careful, you can lift it from here, but don't use too much force. You don't want to break it, all right? So now we're lifting the motherboard up. We can actually lift the bottom part of the fan up and then slide this out. So if you want, you can see there's some dust in there. We're going to clean that up, assuming that is dust and not like some liquid covered something. All right, so I guess there was some moisture that went in there, so it doesn't really want to come out completely. We'll use this to kind of at least dust it off. And there we go, so we got that out. This looks dry, so we should be okay. All right, there's some dust under here. Let's go ahead and get the logic board or the motherboard out. So let's zoom out here, okay? What we're gonna do is we're gonna carefully lift this up. You wanna make sure to move all these connectors out of the way, make sure nothing is getting caught on it. This one, battery connector, you're gonna have to pull back as well. And again, of course, make sure you don't break the keyboard backlight connector off. So we're gonna slowly, carefully lift this up. Oh, one other connector I forgot to mention. Good thing I didn't yank it out. Um, we got the microphone connector here. Hopefully you guys were following along and didn't just skip all over the place. Otherwise you probably might've torn your microphone. But anyways, there's this here. There's a plastic tab that's kind of at, held with adhesive. Then we flip that latch up just like all the other ones. And then we can kind of wiggle and pull that back. And there we go. Now we can go ahead and lift this out. Let me zoom out again. Okay, so now we got that. We can pull this back slightly, lift it up and carefully out of the way. All right, so this looks okay. I am gonna use a toothbrush to kind of just dust it off and then use my air blower to clean it up. There does seem to be like a little liquid residue here. As you can see, it like dried up and then it left some 
marks there. But uh, luckily it's nothing much, so I'm kind of just going to brush it off with a toothbrush here. Get all the dust off. You don't really need to worry too much about the residue unless it's like connecting like these little components here. So it's not really too big of a deal. I'm going to hold underneath this so when I brush it, it's not going to bend it. All right, some of this stuff doesn't want to come out, but that's okay. It shouldn't affect anything. All right, clean that off. Okay, we're going to clean this up now, now that we got everything off of it. I already kind of brushed it and blew the dust off of it earlier. But now that we don't have all the components in the way, we can kind of do a little bit better. Oh, that little piece fell off. That piece always breaks off. It's like too, too soft. So there's like an adhesive that kind of holds it. And then it just sticks there. So I might have to use a little glue or something if I want to put this back. This doesn't really do much, so you don't really need to put it back. Um, but if you do, um, yeah, just put some like glue or something. Or you can even just leave it and let it stick on itself like that. You can see. All right. So there we go. Let's go ahead and set this aside so we're done with this. If you're handling this, hopefully you kept yourself grounded, um, usually by touching something metal that will normally, if you get static built up and it shocks you, then that surface or material should be good to keep yourself grounded enough that you won't have any issues. All right, so we got that out. We're gonna go ahead and lift this out. There's one screw here, I almost forgot. And that is also another T8 or Torx 8 screw. So we're gonna switch back, basically the same screw that held in the screen cable screws or the screen hinge screws. All right, and now we can lift this up and out. All right, is this stuck on top? Okay, the speaker cable is kind of stuck on top, so we're gonna route this out of the way. Hold this up. Oh, let's actually take this, why not? Let's take the speakers out here. Um, these speakers are actually, you don't have to remove the motherboard to get it out. So if your speakers are all crackly or something, um, you can actually remove these screws very easily. There's only three of them. Again, keep them all in order because they are different size, shape, and lengths. And if you mix them up, you can damage your computer. All right, so there we go. We got those three out. The one thing we're not gonna be taking out is the battery and the trackpad on this model because once you take it out, oh, actually, maybe I should. There's water under here. Um, oh, shoot. Okay, so we found where the water is. It's all underneath the speaker. We're gonna dry this the best we can. Um, actually taking out this, uh, the battery might cause more problems. So we're going to just try and dry it the best we can here. Okay. If the battery goes bad, we'll have to replace it later, but I'm going to use my electric air blower just to blow all the water out. We're basically going to blow it down in this direction. Okay. Um, anyways, let me clean this dust out of the speaker here. I have a lot of videos showing how to replace the battery. So if you're here to see how to replace the battery, I have a video specific for that okay so if you want to see that just let me know i can send you a link or you can search my channel for basically the same thing battery replacement you'll probably find it all right so here we go got that mostly dried up and cleaned out um, i have this little handheld air blower oh there's still some water trapped in there so we're gonna try and get that i'll use my electric one later for now, we'll set this aside. Okay, we're gonna do the same thing with the speaker on this side. I'm running out of desk space, so that's why I'm not like zooming in as much and moving this all over. Okay. If the battery and other stuff um, are having problems later, then I'll, I'll kind of take it out after that, but so far it seems okay. The trackpad hopefully will be okay as well. This side, this side's actually dry. So it's all on that one corner. Okay, let me clean the dust out of this speaker too. There's some stuff that's kind of just stubborn and won't come out of here, but we'll see. I'll keep working at it and see what I can do. You want to be careful because these speakers, as they get old, the membrane around it kind of gets brittle. Okay. All right, so get that all out. And be careful not to drop stuff into these holes, okay? Because then that could mess with the speaker as well. All right. All right, so we got that speaker out. We'll set that aside. I'll probably bring it with me outside to, excuse me, dry it off with the electric air blower. 
Um, all right, we need to remove this one. You just lift it up now and you can kind of wiggle and pull that back. You can see there was moisture here too. Okay, so this board itself might eventually, it might need to be replaced. But at least these components aren't like necessary for things to work. Okay, so let's see. All right, we're going to brush this off. And then again, I'm going to take this outside and just make sure it's completely dried. And that no, no components in here are shorted from the liquid. This one has some like brown, I don't know if you can see that brown burnt stuff in there. So that port might be fried. Um, if it is, that's somewhat okay because we can just replace this piece. Oops, I accidentally dirtied the, or I touched the <laughs> residue from the heat pad. I thought it was wet, but it was just that. So that stuff's a little bit greasy. All right, you don't wanna mess with that little smudge too much. Um, you can clean it off with rubbing alcohol if you want, but that's fine, it'll help transfer the heat. So we're gonna leave it there. All right. Okay, so we got most of it, good. I'm just gonna, oops, sorry, I'm going out of view of the camera. All right, we're gonna set this aside. I'm gonna see if I can test the SD card slot and stuff like that afterwards. All right, I'm gonna have to see, cause I need to find my tools to do that. I don't know if I have an SD card slot, or SD card with me. All right, anyways, let's go ahead and now dry up this stuff in this little corner edge here. Okay, there we go. All right, let's kind of clean this up. Okay, I'm gonna have to be a little careful with this rubber piece, so I'm actually gonna just peel that off so it doesn't get knocked out. All right. Okay. For the most part now, it's all dried up. I don't know if there's any water hiding underneath the battery here. Try and see if we can get the paper towel to go underneath. And there we go. All right, so now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take this outside. I'm gonna use my electric air blower, blow through the keyboard, make sure no water is coming out through all these holes here and dry out the battery area. And then we'll reassemble this, all right? Oh, one of these little rubber thingies and it came out. This doesn't really do anything, but uh, yeah, I don't know how it got over there. But uh, normally this will be in here. I don't even know how you can put it back because the way it sits, there's this little flared out part. Come on, focus there. So there's this little flared out part there and that's how it kind of hooks into there. So I don't know how that came out. I think it was just already out. Okay, anyways, I'm gonna take this outside. We'll leave that out for now, I guess. Um, I'm gonna take this outside, dry it up, and then we'll reassemble. All right, see you guys in a bit. All right, I'm back. So there was actually quite a bit of water in the bottom part of this battery area here. Hopefully the battery's okay. Um, we're going to reassemble this and we'll find out. Um, also, when I blew it out, there was a lot of water in this area as well. So we'll see what's going on with the SD card slot. Hopefully I'll have an SD card to test. Also see if the HDMI works and the USB port there. All right, so to put this back, as you can see, I'm putting this at an angle, okay? And the reason you wanna do that is you wanna get these metal tabs here underneath, all right? If anything, you gotta also help push it down. All right, and we're gonna get this all lined up. Okay, get these screw holes lined up here and here, okay? It's a little bit tricky looking at it from a side angle here, so I have to look over from the top. Okay, there we go. Let's get the T8 or Torx 8 screwdriver back and put this one screw in. Let me double check it's lined up. Okay, nope. All right, there we go. And then let's go ahead and get this screw in. Oh no, it's going out of alignment, I'm sure. Okay, I need to check it again, make sure it's lined up. 
that in place, get this screw in, and tighten that down. Alright, good. We can go ahead and put the speakers back. So I cleaned out the speaker as well. There was a little moisture in there. So we'll get that. And we'll get this one. Um, you don't have to put these right away. You can actually wait till you put back the motherboard and stuff too if you want. All right, but let's go ahead and get this under. So you want to thread that underneath. There we go. And then rotate that. Okay, let's get all these screws back in. Switching back to the T5 or Torx 5 screwdriver. Okay, and let's get these. I like to loosely fit these screws first just to make sure everything lines up right. Okay, this is not wanting to line up right. Okay, there we go. And I'm just loosely fitting it so I can still move it around if it needs to. Alright, there we go. And last one there. Alright, we'll tighten these all up. There we go. And then we'll tighten the three down here up as well. Alright. And the last one up here. Alright, and tighten that into place. Good. Tighten that into place. Tighten this into place. Let's go ahead and tighten all of them down. Good. Alright, so we got all of that in. Let's go ahead now and get the um, motherboard or logic board, whatever you want to call it. Alright, I'm going to take this. Again, this is the tricky part because you want to make sure all these cables end up back on top of the motherboard. Alright, so you're going to have to kind of like hold them out of the way as you're slowly lowering it down. We're going to start with the right side here. Okay, again, make sure the battery and the keyboard backlight connector up there is out of the way. We're going to have to push these to tuck these metal clips underneath. Okay. All right. Get that all in. You'll know it's in place because the headphone jack will line up properly. Right now it's not going in right. There we go. Okay. Again, you want to hold all these cables out of the way. The keyboard one's a little tricky. You're going to have to use some tool to kind of get underneath and pull that out. So the trackpad connector here, you can lift that up and pull that back. Same thing with the keyboard connector. Get something under there and pull that back just like that. And this can went back underneath. Stay out, please. Okay, so these two are kind of the most tricky to kind of keep on top. And we're going to slowly, slowly lower it down. Okay. All right, I think we're good. Again, hopefully you got that screw in first because otherwise you're going to have to take the motherboard back out. Okay, again, make sure the headphone jack is lined up properly. Okay, so once you make sure this is lined up right, then we can go ahead now and get all the screws in. Oh, this little pad thing fell off again. I'm going to set that aside for now. We're, we're just going to use the pressure of the screen, or not the screen, the cover to hold it in place. Okay. And this adhesive is kind of peeling up. Let's go ahead now and get some of these connectors in. Um, if you want, we can actually go ahead and put start putting the screws in. So let's go ahead and reconnect this. This is the charge port connector. MagSafe 2 charger. All right, charge, I don't know, charge port. All right, now that we got that in, let's go ahead and get the two screws. Again, we're gonna loosely fit them first. All right, now that we have them loosely fitted, we're going to kind of pull this over. Make sure that it's pushed all the way out. You can also use the charger to help hold it in place, but you do want to make sure your charger is unplugged from the wall when you do that. All right. Okay, we've got those two screws in now. Good. If you want, you can stick that back down if there's that adhesive on it. I'm going to put this rubber piece back on. All right. Let's go ahead now. Oops, I should have zoomed in for you guys. Sorry, I was so far zoomed out. Hopefully you got the idea. We're going to now get the microphone connector back in. You can use this plastic tab to help guide it. All right. Tap that into place. And it's a little bit tricky, especially at this weird angle. But there we go. Slide that in. I don't think you guys were even able to see it, but slide that in. 
and then slide the latch over like that. You want to flip it down by sliding your finger over. You don't want to like use a tool to push it because a lot of times you'll end up ripping that off. All right, so now we got the um, speaker connector here. Just get it lined up and click that back down and then you can push down the adhesive there. All right, we're gonna do the battery last. You don't wanna connect the battery while you're still working on it. Okay, keyboard backlight connector, line it up. Usually you're gonna have to push it up that way. Okay, get it lined up and then push it back down and click it into place. There we go. And then what we wanna do is get these screws in so it doesn't wiggle all over the place. Okay, so we're gonna get this one screw in. Okay, and then we'll get the other screw from down here into place. Okay, I just loosely fit it first just to get the two screws in. Once we get these two screws tightened down, um, you don't really have to hold the stuff in place anymore. Okay, so now I'm gonna kind of push over to this way using this little cutout here for the fan. Again, make sure the headphone jack is lined up and everything. And then you can kind of just hold it in place and tighten that screw down. All right, so we got that one tightened down and then tighten this one down. Again, you want to make sure all the connectors are on top of the board, that nothing is caught underneath. All right. There's a little fiber stuck there. It doesn't want to come out. Okay, well. All right, let's go ahead and continue. So we got all of that. Let's go ahead and continue putting everything else back in. We got this one screw here. Okay, so we'll put that one in. Then we're going to go ahead and put the SSD back in again and make sure you put it the right way. Um, there's a shorter edge here and that faces down towards the center of the MacBook. We're going to push both sides together just like this. There we go. Drop that into place. Take that screw and put that back in. Okay, then we're going to go ahead and get these back in as well. Let's zoom in. All right. I'm going to flip that latch up, make sure it's up, pull it back slightly, and then get that into place. Okay. And now just push this edge down to hopefully help it slide in. I think it's a little crooked, so it's not going in right. You want to try and get this in straight. Otherwise, it's going to get caught on the edge and not go in right. All right. So it can be a little tricky because you have to get it all in at the same time. There we go. All right, so here you can see now the entire connector is in. And then same thing, slide it over, slide your finger over to latch it down. Right? <clears throat> Trackpad connector here, same thing. Pull it back. I like to use my fingernail to kind of pull the edge of that back. All right? And then once you get it, line it all up, pull it in. There we go. And then we'll just slide our finger over the latch, but let's make sure it's in all the way. Okay, good. And latch that down then put that back in. Okay, we can go ahead and put this connector back in from the other, this is the to the daughter board. All right, we're gonna pinch the both pieces together. Oops, sorry, pinch both pieces together to click it down. And there we go. Then let's move this over so you guys can see a little bit better over here. All right, make sure this is all stuck back in. All right, we're going to get the speaker connector, line it up, and then just click it back down into place. Good. Don't forget the screw for the battery connector down there. So we're going to get that screw in. Okay. There we go. Let's continue moving our way over to the left. All right. Let's go ahead and actually, oops, I screwed up. I'm going to have to lift this back up. So here you can see we can't lift the motherboard up to put the fan back in. That was my mistake. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to just loosen all these screws for the motherboard again. Um, you don't have to take them out completely. I'm pretty sure we can just leave them in. Um, if I do, then we'll take them out. But we can just loosen it. Usually what I do is I loosen it all the way and then tighten it over to the right once. So here you can see we can lift this back up. Hopefully that's enough to get this fan back in without having to take everything else out. All right, so let's see. We're going to work our way to slide this underneath just like this and then flip it down as you rotate it and you can see we're getting that back into place. Oh, is it caught on something there? Okay. Oh, it's hitting my finger, so I'm trying to lift it up. Okay, so 
I might have to take some of the screws out because it's not wanting to go back in all the way. Come on, get in. What am I hitting? Oh, there we go. Okay. So there we go. Now we're going to get this back in. Lift the back of this slightly up, and then you can go ahead and pull this back. All right, can be a little bit tricky. Okay, and that's usually why I leave the fan connected and don't take it out. But uh, there we go. Okay, I had to kind of lift the fan and pull it back a little. And there we go. Slip that, flip that latch down. All right, again, make sure everything is lined up right over here. And let's go ahead and tighten all these um, motherboard screws back in. Sorry for mixing up steps and forgetting the fan, so made it a little bit harder for you guys. Let's go ahead and tighten that back down. Okay, tighten this back down. So we only had to loosen those three screws. All right, there we go. What do we got next? We got the... Did I mix some stuff? Okay, no, that's right. So then we got the three screws going down here. So we're going to get those. This one here. That's what I get for working right to left instead of left to right. All right, get that screw in. Get the screw in. I'm going to loosely fit the fan screw right now because we're going to make sure it's adjusted properly. Okay, and we'll tighten this screw down. Get the other fan screw over here and loosely fit that one. I'm going to tighten this screw down over here. Okay. If the screw is hard to twist, that means it's not going straight into the um, screw mount. So make sure you you undo it and make sure to do it right. Okay, there we go. Let's go ahead and get this screw here for the fan. Okay, now that we got all three screws in, I'm going to pull the fan up towards the here with my thumb towards the uh, heat sink. All right, and now we can go ahead and tighten them all down. All right, and the third one. Okay, the rubber piece we can actually put last if you, um, if you want, or you can put it now, um, because with this on, it slightly gets in the way of the cables, but here you can see how you do that. You kind of bend it up a little bit to get it in, and then you kind of let it slot back into place, just like that. I'm going to get the wireless card here, all right. And we'll put this into place, just line that up. And then pinch both sides together, just like that. There we go. And drop it back down into place. Get that screw in. Okay, don't forget the PH0 or JAS0 screw at the top holding the heat sink down. Alright, let's look at that. And put the screw in. There we go. We're done with that one. Switch back to the T5 or Torx 5. All right, let's put this cable back in. Again, you want the opposite ones to line up. You don't want to put the ones that look the same to each other or it won't snap in. Line that up. Okay, make sure it's good in place. And then just push it down. Same thing with this one. Line it up. You might have to kind of move it around side to side. And there we go. All right, make sure everything's good, held in place. Now we're going to put these little metal latches back on top. Or whatever you call them, metal covers, I don't know. Metal brackets, braces, I don't know. Okay, get that in. And get that in. We're almost done. Then we just gotta test everything. All right. And we should be good to go. Line that up. Hold that in place, get that screw in. Good. Get the other one, same thing. And screw that in. All right, let's go ahead now and get the screen back on. I'm gonna flip this back over, hang it over the edge of the desk here. All right, let's come out a bit. Ooh, that's a lot. All right, anyways, let me get the screen. Okay, and we're gonna hang this over, hold the screen, the cables out of the way. Drop that into place, hold the screen up, okay? And then we're gonna use the T8 or Torx 8 screwdriver to get those screws in. Again, um, I'm gonna add some thread locker to hold it in place properly, but let's first go ahead and get these two inner screws first. The reason why we're gonna do that is because we need to make sure that everything is lined up properly, okay? 
So I'm gonna loosely fit those. You don't wanna overly tighten them in. Then we're gonna close the screen carefully, slowly. All right, that's very important. Slowly, carefully close this. All right, and there's like dust on my table. Get that stuff off. Okay, and let's zoom back in. <clears throat> All right, so now that we got everything lined up, we're gonna now, oh, let me actually show you what I mean. We're gonna loosen these slightly, just a little. Okay, now you wanna make sure the edge of the screen and everything is lined up. Let me zoom out again. Okay, you wanna make sure the edge of the screen is all lined up. Make sure everything is flush on the edges. Make sure front to back it's lined up here. Usually this will be flush, right? Same thing with the back here, okay? So get that all lined up. And then once you make sure everything's lined up, while you're kind of keeping it in place, you can tighten these two screws down. All right. Okay, next thing we're gonna use the red thread locker stuff here, okay? And we're gonna put back the remaining screws. Let's get that. Okay, you don't need very much, very little, okay? Just like that, if you can see it. All right, and we're gonna do that with all six screws. So once we get in a couple on, the other two on the each hinge, then we're gonna pull the other hinge back out and then add the thread locker there as well, okay? Whoa, that's way too much. Okay, get that in place. Right, now that you got those two in, you can take this back out. And we're gonna add the thread locker on there as well. Okay, just like that. All right, now we're gonna go to this side. This side's a little trickier because you have these wireless antennas and stuff. Um, I think whoever did this, I don't know if this is upside down actually. It's supposed to somewhat hold the camera cable in place. Let me actually, reconnect the camera eyesight cable first. So we're gonna just line this up. Sorry, it's shaking. Let's go ahead and get this lined up. Once you get it all lined up, the way I push it back into place, I use the screwdriver and then I'll slowly walk it from left to right. You don't wanna push it all on one side at all at once. There we go. And then we're gonna get this underneath the rubber piece again. Okay, probably gonna have to line that back up. Get that back in place good get that back into place good All right and stick that oops sorry I'm going out of view basically we just got that cable back under there and stuck it into place All right then we're gonna get this down okay so now what we're gonna do when we put these we're just gonna loosely fit them first the first one all right because we want to make sure to get both of them in there. All right, so we're gonna loosely fit this screw first. Okay, get the second one. Get some red thread locker on there as well. All right, oh, I need more. Okay, and we'll get that in, and now we can go ahead and tighten that into place. All right, we'll tighten this one down into place as well. All right, take this one back out. And we'll get some thread locker on there as well. I have to clean off the tip of this now. All right, there we go. Get all three screws in, perfect. Let me clean this real quick. I don't want it to clog. All right, there we go. Okay, so we got all the hinge screws in. We still have to put these smaller um, things back in. So we're gonna switch over to the T5 or Torx 5 screwdriver again. All right, let's zoom in here a bit. And we're gonna get these back into place. So just get this lined up here, just like that. All right, once you got that lined up, we're gonna get this screw in. Tighten that down, good, just like that. We're gonna go over to the other side here. Okay, get this one in. All 
right, there we go. And we'll get this screw in. All right, now that we got all the screws in, let's go ahead and get the last few connectors back. We got the LCD LVDS connector here. Basically the opposite of what we did before. We're gonna have it lined up and then same thing, but now we're pulling it inwards and then latch that down. All right, then we got the wireless antennas here. This you wanna make sure that they're lined up before you press them down. That's very important because these connectors are very fragile, right? So line it up. Okay. Once it's lined up, you'll know because if you try and move it around, I don't know if you saw that, as you move it around, it stays in that spot. Then you can go ahead and just push it down. All right? Oops. Okay. Push it down. There we go. Same thing. Line this up. There you go. It's in place. Push it down. And last one. Come on. Okay, there you go. Oops. So it's a little bit more tricky because it's longer slack and it goes out of line easily. Okay, there we go. And click that down. Okay, so now we got everything lined up and clicked into place. Let's go ahead and put the little rubber pieces back on. Okay, so this one here. Okay, just like that. This cable is supposed to be tucked under here and this piece is supposed to actually be bent over slightly on top to hold it down but uh I don't know why it's not like that well whatever all right we'll go to this side and we'll put this back on all right and I think we got everything double check okay all the connections look good Let's go ahead now and put back the little pieces that kind of weren't sticking before. So we got this. All right, let's go ahead and put this little foamy piece back there. And this rubber piece, I don't think it's going to stay, but let's go ahead and put that there. Oops. I don't even know how this one came out. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't think it's going to stay. We're probably just going to have to like leave it aside. I don't think we can put that in and keep it there. It's going to just fall out. All right, let's go ahead and see. We're going to reconnect the battery connector. Just line it up, push it back down. Okay, put this back into place. And oh, it actually stays in place. Okay, let's zoom out a tiny bit. I probably should have got like a um, thumbnail, but it's okay. All right, let's go ahead and now take the T5 or Torx 5 sorry, not T5, the P5 or Pentalobe 1.2 screwdriver and get all these bottom screws back in. And then once we're done, we're just going to, again, test everything. So I have to find an SD card and everything. Let's get all these screws. If you're wondering, the two screws here are shorter than all the rest. So if you did somehow um, mix them all up, hopefully that helps. But yeah, other than that, hopefully this video helps you guys out. If it did, please remember to like, subscribe, share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their devices as well. If it helped you save a bunch of money, yeah, and please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. These are customer computers, so keep that in mind. I don't own all the computers in my videos, and most of the time, by the time you see the video, I'm not going to have it anymore. But um, yeah, all right, let's go ahead and do some testing here. Oh, one other thing. You do want to do a PRAM and SMC reset after doing all of that. All right, so normally when you have it plugged in, if the battery's not like 90% or higher, the charge light will be orange. Um, and then what you do is you do control option shift on the left side, power button. That will do a SMC reset. Um, you can do the SMC reset without it being plugged in, but I'm kind of just explaining what will happen while it's plugged in. All right, now we're going to do a PRAM reset, so you push the power button, and then command option PNR, hold those buttons down. The computer should start up and chime, assuming, okay, good, it's working. Then the screen should go back off, that's how you know you did it right, you can let go, or you can just keep holding it until you hear the chime twice. And there you go, it turned itself back on, and that's how we know it's good. So you see it's booting up. We should be good to go. I'm going to move this out of view because it's probably going to show the customer's um, username and stuff. That reminds me, I'm going to have to ask them their login information 
to test everything. So, I mean, you know how to test everything. Just plug it in and see if it works. Um, but other than that, that's all there is to it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. All right, let's drop this. Bye.